Could this be like in a workshop format or in a lecture format? Yeah. We prefer it to be more like a workshop, birds of a feather, Idea back and exchange, forth, exchange, whatever. exchange, yeah. Because there's the, the notion of what is advanced SSH and what is not yet, or probably some voodoo already for some, this is vastly different. So, but let's start. With, let's start with that. Let's start with the Twitter question, right? Uh, right. Yeah. So I, I, I. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? So, so Pepe, Pepe asked on Twitter uh, what because we were doing this workshop several times for different audiences. What would be considered like <coughs> base, basics, yeah, like intermediate, and advanced slash voodoo uses of SSH? And the feedback was quite some. Um, Let's uh, call it, it was, interest, interesting. Yeah, it was it was a lot of feedback, which is great. Um, that, that was really unexpected, and the the range from what people consider basic SSH usage or when does advanced usage start to when is it voodoo uh, was really very mixed up. For some people, things I would consider basic have been advanced. Some said, "Well, everything's voodoo to me." Uh, so, yeah, a little difficult to. And then you got the find. answers like, I'm doing an UDP, UDP forwarding through Netcard through an HS, SSH session. That's basically that's basic usage. So, like, yeah. ah. so uh, have have we settled on a definition of of what? Um, so oh, since we're should we should we should we. Uh, ask a few questions in the, to the audience on, on what they're using. Think yeah, to, to, to maybe maybe give us a few things you consider basic, so we don't cover that again. Connecting to the server. Oh. That is very basic. Yeah, we agree. <laughs> <laughs> Connecting to a non-default port. Yes, I would consider that basic as well. Using a different username. Yeah. If if everyone if anyone uh, does not consider something mentioned from you, consider basic. We should probably just pick it up. And, and if you know somebody who doesn't think that this is basic, <laughs> it's also fine to ask for them. So. <laughs> so, so maybe the media is finally around the right amount of backslashes to escape spaces. <laughs> <laughs> but that is somewhere between voodoo and insane, <laughs> <laughs> depending on your on your shell, on your <laughs> uh, yeah, so the, the, the right amount of, of, of escape sequences for R sync stuff. <laughs> yeah. Somewhere between ten and thirty thousand actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Logging in with a key instead of a password, I think it should be considered basic. Uh, for instance, because uh, if you just uh, want to use uh, GitHub, mm -hmm. you have to uh, they document it, and uh, this is the way that it works. So. And it should be considered intermediate if you want to restrict what one person can do when logging in with the key, mm -hmm. like uh, force commands. Yeah. Stuff. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, basic also server configuration for uh, disabling password uh, or changing mm -hmm. the port. Mm -hmm. I think there's there's some stuff uh, pro problematic with changing ports depending on your operating system. I guess you mostly use Linux or, or some BSD. There it's trivial and OS 10. That's rather complex to change the port because it ignores what you put on. On the listen directive in the config. Oh well, wow. you're lucky you're not considered with that. <laughs> I think it should be considered intermediate. Like you really should touch on touch on the matter of uh, the SSH clients configuration. Because not many people know of it. Okay. Who uses the SSH config file? Like dot SSH config? For the client. Huh? For the client side. For the client side. Okay. For the hosts, if they're involved. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, anyone not using that already? Only for a few things. So not not consequently for all no. for all connections. Okay. Okay. But so would you consider this a basic or or, 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 or intermediate usage? Yeah, but nobody in, in, in the beginning nobody knows about it. Yeah, yeah we we've, we've met a few people who were actually doing 
pretty pretty good uh, SSH usage, but they were really taking long, long lines <laughs> to connect with things. Um, we're very happy to learn about SSH config. <laughs> yeah. uh, one basic thing, uh, generating keys, two partner factors. In general, generating keys, or or just e two fifty five nineteen ones. It's um, supported since six point four. Yeah. Unfortunately, uh, checking the fingerprint of the server that you are connecting to is uh, not really <laughs> basic uh, yet. So uh, yeah, well, that can pose some questions on. Especially if you have version mix, mix matches. Yes, uh, mix there matches. was a, a switch, so uh, many people got really stuck when uh, they got a different fingerprint than they expected and mm -hmm. they saw on the client. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, the formats uh, changed and the keys changed as well. Right? Because before it was the LSA key and now it's the ESDS, ECDSA. Um. Yeah, we could we could um, cover some some key types, for example. Uh, maybe basic uh, key agent, sort of agent, SSH agent. Yeah. Okay. In fact, yeah. Um, I think I I tried to use uh, the new PG agent as an SSH agent because it claimed in the manual that it can do it. But uh, after uh, trying to set it up for uh, some days, um, it turned out that in fact it's what it cannot really do. But mm -hmm. I use it every day because that's the only way I can authenticate with my PGP smart card. So my SSH key is not just some plain text right. file. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I found. <laughs> we learned something today. <laughs> <laughs> that is good. Um, Here yeah, for example, for the news, that would be a nice takeaway from the workshop if uh, I could uh, stop using uh, next ray agent on my computer and just use the GNU PG agent for uh, an SSH agent. And actually, there are plans for the pitchfork to implement this kind of okay. stuff. Uh, you do know about no. Oh. Yeah. no. 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 Uh, <laughs> 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 it's a module that will uh, take. Uh, it's a will take uh, a SHD password. So we uh, have the same type of thing. You enter your SH password to log in to your user, and the uh, uh, module loads SH as SHD tokens to be stored in the scared uh, version of SHD. <laughs> This sounds I am not sure if I like this idea. Does it work with all GPG agents? Uh, the mm. Well, I'm not using um, GPG uh, agent, so I haven't I haven't come yet, so yet, so. I'm 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 out of my. If you want to come up <laughs> and show us. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Um, I don't know if that uh, is out of scope of the workshop, but uh, I use uh, two different. Uh, what is it called? Proxy command. One is a corkscrew that is uh, for parallel the SSH connections through an HTTPS tunnel, and mm -hmm, I use yeah. it with a program called PageGuide, um, which is a reverse uh, HTTPS proxy basically. And the other thing is that I use uh, Monkey Sphere in most of my servers, and uh, so Monkey Sphere also works as a SSH proxy command. And uh, I think that's quite no, useful because uh, Monkey Sphere allows a couple of different things, uh, but one of them um, is that uh, you publish your uh, OpenPGP key or public key or certification, 
and uh, you can uh, derive a SSH key from this uh, uh, public key. So you can make a monkey sphere enabled uh, public key. And so you can connect the authentication that is provided by DGP uh, to the application and uh, the access control that is provided by SSH. Mm -hmm. And this is quite useful, for example, for uh, uh, situations where you want to do a key revocation or a key rollover. It makes it uh, maybe easier. So that will allow you to use uh, server key rollovers um, without distributing keys or having uh, offline backup keys or something like that. Because that is actually supported you, since uh, OpenSSH 6.8. You can uh, revoke your uh, this one key and mm -hmm. then all the servers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. something I've never heard of. Which <laughs> I've learned a great few things here. <laughs> um, What I can help with is uh, key types, like RSA, DSA, ECDSA, ED25, uh, 255.19, and that stuff. That is of interest. Yeah. Like, which ones to use when? Uh, about ESA, you can do uh, the configuration that takes it. Uh, that do that uh, because the real content source. So you can, for example, for GitHub, an ADL RSA keys, but you can for as the ADL RSA keys, so that you have to know that you can do it. I'm not sure I got that now. Uh, so you can, uh, for example, uh, specify what key are you going to use, the one you will use. Um, uh, yeah, you can drop okay. it down to E2519, uh -huh. and you can do that on a whole status, but it's a little bit tricky. Okay. Um. I would need to, to cheat with my own SSH config here. You can also do the same with uh, the end or the uh, Two other things both of you uh, will bring them up uh, for purposes. Master connections, yeah. yeah but okay. And um, usually fine thing. Using uh, identities only. Yeah, that's okay. that's that's very helpful. Um, I'll take a few notes here, so we can... Somebody broke the, in broke the internet again. Oh, no. oh. Mm, okay. okay. So I guess everyone's already using key authentication, hopefully. That's good, okay. I guess also most, most of you will be using RSA keys for multiple reasons. Mm -hmm. um, I would be wanting another cipher. Um, that's actually not the cipher, but the authentication side of the connection. Um, RSA is fine, um, since that is supported across all operating systems and SSH version 2 since uh, many years. Uh, you probably want to switch over to ED25519 keys these days, because the key exchange is faster. If the server already supports it. But that is limited to having a, an SSH server uh, version 6.4 or higher. That is the case for your server landscape, you're lucky, that's fine. Like, like half a second or a speed improvement? A speed improvement, uh, depending on how fast your machine is and how many connections you have. Um, especially on if you're using uh, like small iron boards, embedded boards, uh, that really makes a difference, especially if they don't have any hardware acceleration. AES hardware uh, No, AES and hardware acceleration. Yeah. Um, also, the keys are smaller. Keys are smaller, but yeah, it's okay. Um, if you're going like 4096 bit RSA keys, um, a connection can like, take two or three seconds to connect. 
course, that's mitigated by using control master in many cases, like multiplexing the connection. Um, it's also um, maybe a, a good strategy to not rely too much on RSA in the, for the future, because uh, we're not sure how long RSA will be around and, and be safe to use. Of course, that's a cryptographical consideration and not, nothing. I don't know of any real breaks of RSA, but there's constant evolution of, of problems with RSA, especially you can't just start using longer keys because over 4096 bits, you get other attacks against RSA uh, that become feasible. So just making keys longer won't work there. Uh, that is um, something new. Can you talk about it? Uh, I don't have anything really new there. This has been there for many years. It's just years. before me. Um, if, if you... Details on the RSA attacks. Uh, if, if you make RSA keys too longer, too long, yeah. um, you get a, you run into probabilistic problems, um, which make, uh, which give you a better chance to brute force things. Uh -huh. uh, I have details some, somewhere in my notes here, um, which uh, gives you problems when, when just making keys longer. Also, this uh, takes more time to connect, so you actually don't want that. Uh, and E255-19 keys give you a lot of room to spare here. Sure. Um, so what is the key type that you recommend them, if not RSA? Uh, if if uh, I, I can use uh, modern keys, I use uh, ED255-19. So ED255-19, uh, like this. Give me a second. ED255-19. Bernstein's favorite. <laughs> somebody broke the internet. That's why. Ah, somebody broke the internet. No, there is a line missing at the end. Why I can't do any text selections? Yeah, what are you using for the uh, <laughs> Maxi? What are you using for the software? No, 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 Um, just give a type um, 
and the file name, there's no bit size to configure. Mm -hmm. They're always the same. Still, if, you, if you're managing, for example, medical equipment or something similar, ancient, ancient uh, software, make yeah. sure they are be supported, otherwise... You're probably it's using tape. Is, is, <laughs> hmm? is there a... Let's say... A, yeah, but, so if I want to know what is the server uh, supporting, um, I just... Uh, Log in uh, with Telnet and ask uh, what is the version of the software, or there is a specific command that I can uh -huh. use to ask. Okay, are you supporting this? Uh, okay. You can create the host user. Host. Like that. Host dash. Mm -hmm. Dash P. No. So if, if if you have access. If you have access to the server, you can just start SSHE with a minus V. It will give you an error, yes. but it will also show you the, soft, the software version. And with that, you can look up what what uh, he's are supported. Yeah. But there, I think there is there is a there's a there's a there's a command line prompt on the on the SSH client to to query the server on what on what uh, what he supports. Yeah. But I don't know it off on, on, on top of my head. And I think that is just looking, trying to look it up. I think uh, Verbus mode also lists some of these. Yeah, but I think yeah, the, 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 minus minus uh, verbose only lists the one they 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 agree on. If you ah, minus uh, VDB. Yeah, 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 yeah. Minus VDB. Very useful. Usually, you know, maybe the first thing. <laughs> so for uh, for a bit more at least my version does not say anything about host key there. So for normal, uh, uh, medium. To advance in the, what's the like, like proposed way to use SSH from, from a key management perspective. Um, I, I think I, I know how SSH works. Try, try to, try to. So, so when I, when I have like, I have three, key, three keys, one for GitHub, one for general stuff, like, like mm -hmm. hackerspace, um, Logins and one for my Uber space, for example. Mm -hmm. um, and I often run into the problem that um, it, it, uh, the way it works is to try every key if I don't specify one and mm -hmm. one that matches will log in and it tries only I think three keys or yeah, it can the yeah. server accepts and then it just aborts with, with, with a yeah, that's uh, the, the message yeah. from the from the so this is why you use the config. Yeah, so uh, I should use the config file for every. Is, is, is it recommended to use the config file for every connection? Uh, I personally would recommend that. That's what I do also. Um, I have a like a default config for everything I don't specify exactly. Okay, so and that override so specifically per host when I need like to downgrade some setting so because it's an old machine. So you have a host host asterisk and put the defaults in there and, and okay. override for, for, for the specific host. The nice thing is it helps me I have to connect to a lot of different machines and then I, I don't connect to that machine for a year or something and then for, of course I forget everything about that machine but I still have the config in my config file. So when I when I have to reconnect to that machine again after a year, uh, all the settings are still there. And at least at least I don't have to remember what's the host name, what's the IP address, what's my username there. Um, so at least I have that. That's a very bad design of the of the agent uh, of the SSH client to just accept uh, instead of uh, throwing an error that the, the the host is not in the config and the, uh, it doesn't know which key to do. I think this this, this thing is very it's not very well known that you can do this. Yeah. Um, and there's also no like like when you search a signal flow by the for the error messages, you don't get any answers. You, they don't point you to the host file. It's just like um, because everyone uses the, 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 the um, okay. Uh, the help sure, yeah. is very bad or mediocre. 
-hmm. Because everyone is an expert. <laughs> of course. <laughs> uh, this is what you should. Yes, you do. Uh, for the specific host, you use this identity is only yes, and it will only send a single key instead of throwing all your public keys at the server, which of course then says, well, that's too many tries and yeah. go away. So in my and uh, SSH slash company. Yeah. Can you show it? Uh, do because I need to have the host star, uh, host star at the bottom or is it at the top? At top, the first slash at the top. The top. And then I say I have to. Um, uh, it's it's simply those two lines. For the general host, you say identity is only yes. And for the specific host, you always say identity file and the path to the file to the uh, key you want to use. And we'll only send that single key, okay. which prevents the connection abort because you retry too many keys. Can you show a valid example there? Like write in a valid way? Uh, is it always a stage slash config or is that different from the default? The default is in, in, in the .ssh slash config in your, in your home directory. Yeah. Um, you can specify another config file uh, for the for the command line, but usually it, it lies in your in your home directory. You can you can have um, you can have a general one for the for, for the whole machine in slash etc something if I, if I remember correctly. But you can override that one with the with the local with the one in your in your home directory. Okay, well, how will it override? Will it cascade? Will it override? No, I think it will cascade. So if you see the star, then it will it should it should it should file to contact. Remember, it is the config file. You what you what basically what you are asking is can I as a sysadmin just put a same default on the in in the slash etc directory and and have that cascade bound to all users without them being able to override? Yeah, that works. Oh, so you should never use an SSH client on a multi-user machine, so... <laughs> that's a <laughs> question is moved in itself. Why? Because... My, my own. But then it's not a multi-user machine. So if it's your machine, then why would it be multi-user? I mean, you should never have keys, private keys lying on a multi-user machine. Or no, not even use agent forwarding or anything because then the root could do whatever he wants to. So, yeah. agent forwarding sense it. Is it actually the, 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 the description of the option of SSH for that? But that's, but that's for forwarding, not for, not for like typing SSH uh, server name. And Directly connecting from, from your user on a multi-user machine. Or but it, it, I just mean that whatever type of authentication you use, the machine on which the client is is vulnerable to multi-user setup. So what does multi-user setup mean? Like the, the root can always access anything. So yeah, but if the root always, you always have to trust your administrator. No, but no. not on the client machine. The client machine is yours. If it's so yours, <coughs> you can say that yes. But if you're on user space and connect from there, then of course the user space and the user can map memory map and stuff. Yeah, sure. But uh, I'm mostly describing so-called jump hosts where people try to SSH from an intermediary host yeah. instead of just forwarding whatever they can and do the actual authentication from the yeah, first time. Yeah, of course. Ah, okay. Uh, it's generally a good idea to uh, use identify now uh, and default config because uh, if you connect to any other host, it could be a uh, religious host. It can check the identity your client opens mm -hmm. against the public list. For example, some of this uh, with uh, the GitHub of the key set. Yeah. It mm -hmm. just could connect to the host and uh, it will check against this great of the key set. 
identify your Excel profile just uh, based on the keys that I'm offering. So if you have mm -hmm. configured in a way that uh, leaves data, you are in the description. There's actually a pan module that already does that. So you can set that up, and if you use the same uh, SSH public key you have on GitHub, you send it to connect there, it will check back with the public keys on GitHub, fetch it from there, and if it works, it will accept it. Hmm. Of course, it's pretty useless unless you want to demo that. Uh, you can um, probably enumerate users and have some privacy implications with that. It's not for general use, because why would you accept all GitHub plugins on some box? Like you could configure that so you don't have the uh, usernames uh, to let him and say one about each other. Yeah. Uh, okay. Why is the most widely used secure tool on our machines, <laughs> such as security? <laughs> okay, so. The, the identity is the only thing and not offering multiple keys but only a single key is now. Uh, you can also, also offer no key at all, which is what I do. Uh, I just configure it and also with the one I make the one more. So make it more than one time with a stick key. Okay. So you generally do not uh, send any key. Yeah. Like for a new host, you don't offer any, any default key. Okay. That's also nice. And actually, this is a setup that encourages you to write the SSH config file. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's generally a good idea to use the config file because, it's, it's, as you it's, already it's, said, it's, I keep it's, forgetting it's, about it. I can look things up again it's, later. It's, 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 it's documentation. Yeah. yeah. And we, nobody wants to write documentation, so <laughs> you force yourself to write at least a, a rudimentary type of documentation. Yeah. Why is this not the default? <laughs> Documentation? <laughs> no. Uh, like, Using config? No. Don't try. Don't, don't try to expose any identity files. I guess uh, <laughs> privacy was not a consideration in design. Yeah, but it's about sixteen, and there have been a lot of problems. <laughs> yeah. This is BSD. BSD moves slowly. <laughs> it's actually open BSD. Open BSD. Yeah. yeah, they don't care about security. I, I uh, what is security? For privacy is something different. No, yes. Security by Saint Defaults is a topic no one ever thinks about. Have, have you seen Saint Defaults? <laughs> In many cases. Alpine has pretty good default. Hmm? Alpine has pretty good default. Alpine, okay. Alpine. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Alpine is the new OpenBSD. <laughs> <laughs> yes. the, the single one tool with Saint Defaults. Uh, the problem with uh, Alpine is that uh, due to GRSEC, most things don't work, but the things that work, they kind of work. <laughs> that, that's encouraging. <laughs> I'll check back in a few years. Maybe yeah, sure. then it has gathered some support. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Uh, we have. Uh, So, so none is basically just a file that doesn't exist, or <laughs> that's probably the case. It interprets it as, a, as a file name, yeah. It has been highlighted, and so it's yes, it's probably special. So if we create a key file with the name of none, <laughs> mm. <laughs> that, yeah, yeah. Or you can put some uh, graffiti that you want to put in the log files of the yeah. <laughs> Emojis. <laughs> yes. But I actually have a question regarding Please. file transfers. Okay. Uh, I have a box which, uh, let's just say, it has uh, inadequate hardware, and sometimes I feel that uh, the bottleneck 
in transmitting files to it and from it is the not crypto. the method, but rather the, the crypto. The crypto. Mm -hmm. Is there a way to downgrade crypto just for that? Uh, yes. Uh, there's there's two problem solutions to that. Uh, one is the uh, SSH high performance patch that will, especially on um, uh, file transfers, give you a better speed. Um, it's standard in FreeBSD, it's non-standard pretty much everywhere else, and it might not be available for your distro. Um, the other one is you could use a non-cipher non -cipher for, for encryption, which still gives you authentication, but no crypto. But you may need to uh, recompile your client side because that has been removed as a compile time option by now. So you can also, of course, play around with, with, the, with, the, with the encryption parameters, but I don't see that uh, that much much of a difference in in the. Uh, also, yeah, that, at least that's my my experience with uh, like small arm boards or something. Like yeah, and the actual cipher to use would be Cha Cha Twenty. If you don't have AES hardware, oh, which is typical in arm boards, is probably a good idea to use. Um, oh, wait, wait, yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. the 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 actual combination is if you have if you have hardware support for AES, then you. Then you typically don't have problems with performance or yeah, any, in yeah, other regards. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, key exchange with, with ED25519 will be a little, a, a little bit faster on Connect. And the symmetric cipher, if you don't have AES, um, Charger 20 is yeah. surely a good, good idea to use. But needs a fairly recent SSH version yeah, yeah, again. Yeah. So. If, if this is an old Solaris box we're talking about. <laughs> Actually, but then you have no cipher. Then you yeah, <laughs> but at least on the Solaris box you have no cipher. It's actually an Intel Atom box. Older Atom, like a D five twenty five or something, without the ESNI. Uh, I can check the moment. <laughs> patching that, patching yeah, on the lab system now. <laughs> so so. To Get the version of the survey with the SSH key scan. So they yeah. uh, the return, return the key and the version mm -hmm. of the version. Key scan can actually collect all the, the public keys from the server as well. Yeah, cool. It also accepts IP ranges. <laughs> and, and, and pretty parallel. <laughs> so if you have a 10 gig E pipe, um, I would not go for 0 0.0.2. <coughs> no, it does not have the AESNI instruction set. You don't? Or you do? I don't. You don't? Okay. Yeah, try, try Chacho 20. I like sending pixels to the back phone yeah, I for, for yesterday. Chacha 20 cipher. They could Cha -cha -cha find all cipher. the public and switch <laughs> keys somewhere now. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, you'll yeah. probably find a lot of duplicates, especially on VM farms. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess Hetzner had that yeah. a few years yeah. ago where they spawned new VMs and they forgot to remove the SSH keys, so every new VM had the same host keys. <laughs> but that would be a nice art pro uh, uh, would be a nice art project for the congress where we where they always talk, tell us to, to use more bandwidth. So uh, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So some Z map and yeah, key scan and do that. Uh -huh. So where are we now? Well, are you taking notes for the next? I'm taking hours? a few yeah, yeah. notes here. What the solutions were? Maybe we can use a, yeah. a text file that we can pass around. Oh. The internet. Stop it. Well, um. they just launched the key scan. You know. <laughs> yeah, please scan after. Uh, <laughs> I, I wanted to mention. Oh, sorry. Uh, I have a question. Do you guys have experience with mobile HSH much? 
Mosh. Um, I played I played around with it. Um, basically works. Um, we had issues here because the uplink filtered out some UDP packages, so this yeah. didn't work. <laughs> um, yeah. The, the thing is, the, the MOSH code hasn't been audited yet, though, properly, yeah. so uh, use at your own risk. Yeah. On, on, the, on the technical side, it seems to work fine, uh, especially over the mobile networks and, and flaky networks. Looks mm -hmm. good. So, so what they are promising, they are delivering on, on the technical side. On the security side, would I use it for every for for for, for every server? No, probably not. But if you have an NFC box and you yeah, I play play yeah, and yeah. I it, it gives a lot of comfort in, in, when when using, more. especially with uh, flaky latencies and stuff. Uh, I personally would like to use it for some things, but on those connections, I would like to have it. I can't use it because it's UDP, and also it. It's pretty troublesome when you have uh, host names that change their resolution depending on which segment of a network you are, because then it won't connect anymore. So that's okay, I can't use it there. And Tor would be a nice use for flaky latencies, but it doesn't work there, of course. So. And yeah, the the non-audited part is what actually keeps me from using it everywhere. Else. But from the technical side, I haven't found. If you trust it. Um, uh, a follow up to this one? Or? Yes. Yeah, okay, sure. Uh, there's a good use of the Mosh point, and that is um, at least we gain IPv6 support. So, oh, IP, IP, so IP support. You mean IP support? Because IP, IP, no, IP, IP, IP support. IPv4 is legacy IP. IP ah. is IPv6. There's an RFC for that now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Couldn't resist. <laughs> So you you had another you had another question. Ah, I just want to mention that uh, so monkeys is not just useful for managing the keys that you put on the server or for the authentication part, mm -hmm. but it is also useful um, in when you connect to a host for the first time and you want to check the fingerprint. So it allows the system administrator to publish. A, Open PGP public key certification on key servers, and uh, then uh, any user um, can use this to, um, let's say, automatically check the fingerprint of the new server that they are connected mm -hmm. to. And I find that uh, a super uh, useful uh, feature. Mm -hmm. So if you have, if, if if you're not using it only for yourself, but if you have a, a distributed team of people where you want to push out the new information, yeah. So yeah. I'm uh, um, providing uh, um, infrastructure for uh, activist groups, mm -hmm. and so uh, I can just publish this, and I don't have to make sure that each person uh, gets the fingerprint of the new server in a side channel that is also authenticated and encrypted. Mm -hmm. and yes. so but actually, there is an authenticated and encrypted automated solution to do this. Okay. Interesting, very interesting use case. <laughs> Does that depend on some SSH version or is it um, completely independent? I'm not sure. Oh. Okay. Most we, we, we will look that up. <laughs> You may know uh, DKG Daniel Khan Gil one who is the monkey sphere the maintainer. Okay. I haven't heard of monkey sphere before, but he's also the working on the new version of the Open BGP standard, so should be. Yes, uh, question, 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 yeah. Uh, as part of our request, could you demonstrate to me how to set which cipher to use, not for the authentication, but rather for uh, uh, the session itself? My C. My C. My C. Yeah. Oh, it's called session. We actually had set up um, two VMs to connect to and, and, and play around with the configuration. But due to the flaky um, mm -hmm. internet at the moment, 
we are a little bit <laughs> with, 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 with the interactive part of, of, of what we planned, unfortunately. For, for other setups, we, we, we set up clippers. Dash C. Okay, so yeah. We wanted, we wanted to, just a second, we wanted to have something for you to play around and actually change the settings and, 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 and try something out. Unfortunately, it doesn't, it doesn't work at the moment. So we are limited to showing you stuff and, 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 and doing this this way. Have you? So, so but this is pretty much what you write there. Yeah. And actually, there is a really good side effect that if you use uh, this Chacha or Cypher and ED25519 for authentication and keys and key exchange, yeah. then you can do SSH without OpenSSL. <laughs> yeah. Because all the other Cyphers and key exchange stuff comes from OpenSSL, this is built in. So if you don't like OpenSSL lurking around in your sacred, yeah. root privileged administration tool, then... I think that is supported since 7.0 yeah, yeah, or something yeah. like that, yeah. So, yes, uh, do you have any comments or experience regarding the aerospace authentication? Uh, the reason I'm asking is because uh, once we had a plan to migrate to Kerberos, uh, because uh, we believe that user management, especially revoking user rights, is much better if uh, we are uh, managing the Kerberos domain rather than revoking key files from the servers. Mm -hmm. I don't know, I, I would be running away from Kerberos rather than migrating. Actually, this was like eight years ago, so at that time there were no public tools mm -hmm. to hack Kerberos. Yeah, right now, I, I know that from a security point of view, it's bad that you can steal the tickets and things like that. Yeah, that's an issue for sure. But from a user management point of view, I believe it's better than the key files on the servers. Can centrally manage it. Are there any solutions to centrally manage key files on servers? Yeah. Have you considered the uh, certificate based authentication there? Uh, like running, I mean, of course, it boils down to running your own CA. Yeah. And it's you still, just still sign, easier, sign still piece than, and. Uh, it's, it's still easier than setting up Kerberos and, and then everything, so. Unless you already have a Kerberos infrastructure, yeah. that's yeah. That basically implies Microsoft Active Directory and all that stuff. <laughs> I have a few OS 10 screens yeah, yeah, there, yeah, yeah, yeah. but uh, nobody uses SSH. So. Uh, personally, un unfortunately not. Uh, it's interesting if, if you plan it correctly, if, if, if you know what you're doing and you plan it correctly, it should work. Um, I've heard about it, but I have never done it myself, so I can't give you a first hand experience there. Mm -hmm. but, I understand the issues and, and, and it should it should fix those, those those issues for you. I don't know how how, how much of an effort this is to, to, to roll out and set up. I I would, I, I would be scared. Int intrigued but scared. <laughs> <laughs> no, I always like a good challenge, but it's it's not something you do over the weekend. <laughs> yeah. I am a guy who did this actually. Yeah. He implemented it. And did he enjoy it? <laughs> And the end result was pretty much good, I would say. But his liver... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and and that, that, that kind of evaded the question. <laughs> so so, so you, have, you're, you already implemented it and, and it works for you? Uh, it was in a fast company. Mm -hmm. So I know that it uh, worked in production for two years. Yeah. Actually, I don't know what happens ever since. <laughs> get them, get them to do a, to to do a talk or, or on that. I would be interested to hear that. Please. Yeah, there may need to be some psychologists in the first row to care. Yeah, for the alcohol on the table. And yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, there's a lot of voodoo in, in, involved in that, but yeah. Mm -hmm. But 
but I'm, I'm not coming from the background where we have to manage uh, where, where I have to manage certificates for the users. So I'm more more, more decentralized or, or not that organized. So it's a little bit different from what you do or, or what, what, what the Kerberos thing needs to fix. But it's cool. Oh, I have to look this up once I have some spare time. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. Okay. This is moment of art. Okay. Any, any one of you doing uh, two factor authentication for, for password based uh, logins? Or uh, key based logins? Key, key, key based logins. Yeah, yeah. Smart card is a kind of two factor. <laughs> I actually have a two factor on well, my, not one of my servers, but a server that I use, but uh, it's uh, being uh, managed by someone. It's a YubiKey based authentication. It's okay. not key, um, it's, mm -hmm. it authenticates to uh, not a third party server, but to another server. And mm -hmm. it's sometimes kind of finicky. Like if uh, it cannot reach the server, mm -hmm. you have to wait for a five minute timeout. <laughs> five minutes? Five minutes? Five minutes? Five minutes? Yes, no, it's that's around that long. Oh, that's okay. I've I've seen I've seen hosts with a, with a one day limit and stuff like that. So that's that's, yeah. that's not good because we we are playing around not playing around. We are actually using uh, Google Authenticator. It's a two factor authentication with Google Authenticator mm -hmm. and works works quite well without any major problems. And usually it, by now it's an app get installed and configures quite yeah. quite easily. On, on Debian. On Debian, it distills it, it's a package. Yeah. But I managed to get it work on, on OS X as well, so compile the files and, and configure your PMD. Just add a line there, it's, it's uh, quite simple. But if you, if, if, let me follow up on the, on the question regarding the uh, um, smart card. Um, are you using the built in smart card reader or are you using the an, an external? I bought one for like one euro. Mm -hmm. Because we, we have this thing in, in Austria with, with, with smart cards and authentication and in the beginning they were requesting that you buy, buy only this and this smart card reader because they were certified and they were um, glued together basically and, and, and tamper proof, tamper proof and, right, and this... like this. Okay. Because here... And, 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 because they, they request they requested an external box where the pin where, where you enter the pin to to, to, to where you enter the pin on the external yeah. box so you, you can't have a key sniffer uh, sniffing in out the, the, the pins. Well, but there is one problem with that because on a pin pad you can only use numbers, but yeah. on the PC it <coughs> accepts everything. So, for example, I don't use any numbers in it because yeah. there are much more letters. Yeah. No, no, the thing yeah. is, the thing also was uh, this was basically just. Uh, many uh, a scheme to, to generate money because who, who guarantees that the, the, the pin pads are actually temper really temper proof and have not been tampered with? It's just moving the problem away from yeah. here. But so so this is just you you enter the the, the, the passphrase on, on on the normal. Pin actually, pad. since it's yeah. managed by by uh, the GPG mm -hmm. uh, agent, mm -hmm. it's like when entering a passport for a for a GPG key. So. Then, yeah, then, 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 um, then, yeah. When the SSH uh, client asks the agent, mm -hmm. yeah, I need this key, sign this block for me, please. Yeah. Then the first time, a uh, window comes up mm -hmm. and it asks for the pin. Mm -hmm. And then if I enter it, as long as the card is inside the computer, so the, the uh, voltage is there, mm -hmm. you don't have to enter it. Mm -hmm. But as long as you just pull it out a millimeter and pull mm -hmm. it back, it will ask for the pin again. Okay. Yeah. Special Arena card reader. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It actually needs Java drivers to work. So. <laughs> what? <laughs> Why? My liver, my liver. Yeah, yeah. Uh, terrible <laughs> setup. But that's government IT. Yeah. yeah it's it's uh, from kernelconcepts.de. You can buy it there, and it's yeah, bloody Germans. It's explicitly <laughs> compatible with GNUPG, so it's not uh -huh. a PGP but a GNUPG card. Uh -huh. And it, uh, Debian ha actually has an explicit how to yeah. 
Or and then they pay the distributor the, the keys on, on, on the smartphone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Question? Yeah. I actually have a question sure. for the audience. If you have used uh, these uh, hardware authenticators before, like uh, not like that, uh, but more like uh, actual hardware devices. Like uh, I know there's a Java smartcard stuff inside. Okay. You mean like a hammer? What or Java? What, what do you <laughs> there's no Java <laughs> inside like, this. Uh, YubiKey, but rather open source like uh, Nitro Key. There was that uh, Nuke. Mm -hmm. I think that's how yeah. you call it. Anyone's used one before? I would love to hear your experience. I thought too many people use UbiKeys. Uh, I have two UbiKeys, so... Also I to authenticate use. with uh, GitHub. And uh, they were kind of happy with it. The one thing I'm not happy about Kubiki is the Sorry. entire take on open source. Like, yeah. uh, we Thank won't you. publish the source because it's part of the secure hardware. Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah sure. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a pretty common approach with uh, smart card development, sadly. Because for some of the implementation, it actually is a security feature to not publish the source code. Because <laughs> there's no secrets in hardware. Uh, actually, I was looking on it at, like really hard, but I have not found a single way to uh, Using your own resources to make your own open PGP card, like mm -hmm. the app that it, it's uh, not open source, and the card, if you want to develop for it, you have to sign an NDA. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's not like that with this card. You should take a look at that side. There's actually a basic operating system running on it, and it's pretty modular. So it's kernel-concepts.de but, but still you need you need to buy the, the, the card and, and uh, you can make your own like you can take an empty java card and load it into it what, what, why do you want java? why, why is everyone fixated on java? there's no java in it <laughs> no java why would you want java? No one likes Java. Java is designed to be run on Like, is that not a Java smart card? No, why would it be? Okay, then what is it? It's a, something called basic. <laughs> 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 it's yeah. a port from an old Altair computer. <laughs> yeah, it's a smart basic card, smart card operating system, basiccard.com. It's a security. It's produced by Site Control, Card System, GmbH. German software, it has to be good. Yeah, sure. Probably, it's probably one, 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 a side project of a Siemens uh, <laughs> program or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There are, sorry, short, I don't believe that uh, that costs 20 euros or so to make. And that's 15 euros. You don't believe what? That it costs that much to make. There are actually a lot of software shares <laughs> focused on programming Java smart cards. Uh, I know one of them. So, so um, <coughs> using using jump hosts uh, or bastion hosts to, to connect to 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 a machine inside a network that would that be for you for you uh, 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 medium 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 level topic or is it advanced topic or I mean it's a pain in the ass so <laughs> I think we can agree on that or, or what, what are your takes on, on how do you manage that because mm -hmm. you probably all have that that setup right. Medium. No, like in, in my collective, it's an explicit requirement that uh, you have a trusted, how does, you can you call it a trusted physical terminal, uh, which is called a laptop by other people, <laughs> and uh, that uh, you don't make uh, any connection.
connections after reconnecting the host. So you directly connect to each host from your laptop. Mm -hmm. And you don't uh, tunnel things and uh, go through another host and so on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So everything uh, users connect to is directly connected to the internet? Yes. 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 Okay. Do you uh, prohibit control master connections, like multiplexing connections? I have no idea. Actually, I just looked at the SSH manual and I wanted to ask uh, what are these things because I don't know. Because when you use a, a control master connection, uh, you can reuse the an already authenticated SSH connection without authenticating again. Yeah. Like you have one terminal open with a shell, uh -huh. and you set up like a, an SCP copy command. Yeah. And you don't have to enter the password or key for that again. Yeah, it just reuses the already existing connection. Yes, I see. So you could, if for some reason your trusted uh, terminal mm -hmm. um, has been compromised mm -hmm. and you have an active connection with the control your master, somebody could in start injecting or copy files there without yeah. having to re authenticate and just reuse your authenticated connection. Yeah, I see. Okay. So, could you perhaps demonstrate the control master okay. connection? I don't know how good we are in the network connection. Um, yes, yes. Can show you intermittent like Yeah, it's, it's a thing. It, it kind of has moment or is Also, uh, you mentioned you SCP, and uh, the best thing about uh, using SCP with uh, multiplex connections is that if you have the shell properly configured, you can use the tap completion. And, yeah. But that would take yeah. ages if they had to use a new SSH session for each completion step. But yeah. if you have Control Master, then... Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would also require a Control Persist. Yeah. Or keeping or another window open. But yeah. But the, I mean, you can use tap, tap completion already when you have key authentication. I mean, you can actually use it yeah, with but password that's... interactive, but that really sucks. But also with key, it's kind of slow that you have to connect each time yeah. just to get the director yeah. listing. Yeah. yeah, and but if you set a, a control it's persist, which gives you the timeout yeah. before the con uh, connection is taken down, uh, that really makes it comfortable yeah. to to use tap completion. Yeah. So, so, so control control master is is, is is not really hard to set up. It's two lines, two lines in the config file. Um, one to to enable it, and one uh, where it should write its uh, temporary files. And, and that's about it. So it's not. It's not really. It's. It's not. It's not. It's not. It's not. It's not, it's not rocket surgery. Not rocket surgery. <laughs> it's. It's not rocket surgery. But it's something most people either don't either disable it because for the use for, for this use case you, you you probably want to disable it. Mm -hmm. uh, for another for, for other use cases it's it's really really handy and, and, and so useful. Is the control master directive and then? It's control master auto, and then it's the control path where, where the, the client uh, stores the, stores the, the, the configuration. And then with a um, check remote host, you can check whether the, the master connection is active or not and on the client and, and get feedback on that. Um, and you can disable it on the, on the server side if, I'm, if, I, if I remember correctly, right? Uh, yeah, you can. Which would be force a client so that it won't uh, make that connection. <coughs> so it's just you add a. You can of course do this with a asterisk host as well. You just have control master auto and give it a path where the controlling socket ends up. Um, you probably don't want to use slash tmp, but your home directory. Yes. Yeah. It's common to put it in in .ssh. Because um, you can do that by yeah. everybody. Gets. I've, I've put it there for on one specific host for a specific reason because the home directory path would exceed the allowed path maximum length <laughs> to actually put that socket on a system. So I had to put it somewhere else. Wow. Put, put it on. Yeah, it's don't ask. It's like four hundred characters already. The path only to the home directory. Somewhere there seems to be some uh, limit you usually don't run into. 255 characters or so for the home directory path. Um, um, if, if you use that setting uh, for a 
as a general default, <coughs> and you want to um, prevent the use of a control master connection for a specific host, yeah. you can say uh, control master no, no yeah. and it will prevent that. Yeah. Hard links are yeah. bad for your health to directories. So long the uh, home directory that was that and what we have also been mentioning was the control persist. Because mm -hmm. actually, as soon as you take down your shell and, and exit from the remote host, it will also take down the control master mm -hmm. connection. Yeah, and with control persist and the timeout, it will actually keep it alive for that amount. And if you just SSH back in right after, it will just reuse, still mm -hmm. reduce the connection. So. <coughs> I personally use SSH agent. Because then you won't need that um, you, you don't need the, the control persist to, to make that work. But if you we have the example of like copying a file yeah. and you start using um, SCP remote hosting, colon and start completing a path, you can use tap completion with that. Yeah. It will use the key authentication and the control master and keep that master connection alive but and not for, for every tap completion not start a new connection and re-authenticate and all that uh, stuff. Okay. But within that timeout, it will keep that connection alive and it's much more responsive. Yeah. I mean, it's fine to set it to like one minute, you probably won't take much longer for uh, typing in your path. If your shell uh, if you have a shell open and your connection dies, like entering a tunnel and your GSM connection drops, it will take that time time out until your local shell recognizes all that connection is actually gone. It, it so of, don't set it, it like keeps too the high. Synchronous connection. Does this uh, keep the, 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 the synchronous key that was was agreed on by the two parties yeah. like in yeah. cache and uses that again after yeah, that. It just basically backgrounds an active connection and reuses that one for, for every new connection to the same host. So you don't have to do public private key exchange. Yeah. Exactly, yes. Yeah. 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 You just reuse that, you multiplex it like like HTTP2 does uh, with a single connection. Does that at least does and, and does this at least answer your question regarding showing how to how to do it? Is that at least unfortunately we we, we, we had a setup to actually show something like this, but it, yeah. it's uh, yeah. you can always as a to local host. Could you as a local host? Yeah, you know, so this is something local host required. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Not, not right now. No, by the way, the Wi-Fi connection at the moment for the internet access is quite good at the moment. Mm -hmm. If it uh, extends that, I have a uh, 60% signal. Let me see if I can. Uh, oh, my, 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 my VMware is, 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 is rather pissed at the, at the flaky connection. Uh, let me see. Um, also, I, I uh, to return to the Mosh, the mobile shell question, I, I took a look at it and I didn't look at the implementation of the crypto, but the, the design seems pretty clean because it says that I will connect using standard SSH at the beginning, yeah. generate a, a signature key, and then send it through the SSH connection, which can be considered secure, yeah. and then use that in such a blockchaining method that seems sane. Yeah, design. So, looks, looks quite good. to that extent, I haven't seen anything problematic in the design, although I haven't looked at the, the implementation itself, so... It, it still would feel great if you had proper <coughs> auditing of Obviously, those yes. things. It's easy to mess up the crypto. But yeah, if, if you trust it, I mean, that's fine. And if it, if it solves a problem for your connections, that's great. Uh, it's, uh, it's as, as, as you said, it's, li it's pretty limited to certain circumstances when it's useful, but yeah. By the way, it's nice.
Yes, that's... Um, so if I were to implement <laughs> control completion for SSH in a shell, I, I probably would just... Yeah, but you can put any kind of stuff on it. Session, so you don't like need Java or anything. One like that. Line and then yeah, this is funny. The, the shell also yeah. starts one SSH connection background and you start to get the paths. So yeah, that's pretty much what it does. So I don't need to like re recreate a new connection on every path. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then I don't then, and then I wouldn't need some processes for, for the uh, Yeah, it will actually do that. So it, it, it starts a new connect, a new TCP connection, a new SSH connection with all the authentication and handshake, and that takes time. The control master will do that for the, the no, um, if, if you have uh, key authentication set up, you can use that. It will work, but it will be very slow, yeah, yeah. probably, especially if it's really a remote host over the internet. Yeah. And with the control master and control persist settings, it will keep the socket open. And, and have the, keep that alive for the like three minutes timeout here. And if you do another tap completion, it will just reuse that existing connection that's already set up and still running. Yeah, so, so it's just the background. Yeah. Okay. So okay. It's, it's just a lot faster. Yeah. yeah which yeah. makes it more more responsive and comfortable. Okay. It's, it's not needed, but so it will also go into the background when I hit Control D. Okay. Yeah. So even even if you disconnect properly from the host, uh, it will still keep the connection alive for that time off. So don't set it too long because your shell might, if, if your connection dies and you still have the, the remote prompt there, it will wait for that timeout until it drops back to your local shell and recognizes that the, the background connection actually has yeah. been terminated for some reason. Also, uh, one one thing against control uh, persist and control master is that uh, some escape sequences don't work as intended. Yeah, I I would like to use a few escape sequences. I have a few problems with them with nested tmux setup that my tilde character does end up yeah. anywhere but at the at the SSH prompt. Yeah. Yeah. I have not been able to debug that in a pure working state yet. <coughs> I would like to. Um, but actually, escape things I would consider intermediate, not yeah, beginner. Yeah, yeah. Um, you may want to also take note uh, of dash capital O for managing control master connections because you can explicitly exit a control master connection mm -hmm. and terminate it. I just used kill so far. Yeah. <laughs> Of course you can do that. <laughs> um, Why yeah. ask gently when you can just slam it? Yeah. It was <laughs> It was zero. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. See how long this works. <laughs> <laughs> Make it quick. Also, for this, uh, oh, Timos, Timos, yes. Ja, ja, Mach's auch mal. Ja. Was, was soll ich denn tun? Ich hab, ich hab mir die Maschine rebootet, die hat so nicht. Da kommt doch ein Master her, zeigen. Achso, zu der Verbindung. Gut. Sorry, it's just fast auf Timos. 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 Mm -hmm. I have a home directory there. No, nope. I don't. Nope. I see. Where can I create? Uh -huh. Ah, yes. That would be. Mm -hmm. uh, give uh, me a second. Yeah. Convenient. Let Let me set this up. And, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, just go ahead. No problem. We have those few minutes. Okay. Uh. 
with your uh, when you tried the um, I just found something in my my, my notes uh, about SSH. Uh, you can change the escape character for uh, escape sequences. Might that help with your no, no, the problem is that uh, some things really don't make sense to do. So, for example, managing uh, ports forwards and stuff yeah. like that, which because the escape um, thing happens within the client, but that is not the multiplexer, the master. So, yeah. because of this, it's it's kind of fucked up. But you could add an additional port forwarding, at least for a local port, to an existing connection. Yes, uh, well, that should be possible, but it's not... Per so it explicitly says that uh, when I try to hit the escape things, it will say, yeah, I recognize this, but this is disabled because this is a multiplex connection. It actually, that's the, about, that's the error message. Ah, okay. So you can yeah. add, for example, by starting the second SSH, which would go, obviously, to the same same yeah. uh, master, and it would add the port forward, yeah. but, for example, there is no way to remove it, or besides killing the whole stuff, because... Uh, you, you could use uh, SSH-O cancel, that will kill all forwardings on the <coughs> yep, system probably. master. Probably, it's, it's just that the escape system is so convenient that and and of course it works if you disable control persist and you only have control master then you can do uh, escape things in the first connection because that's the master but if you have control persist then none of them are the real masters because the real master is in the background so so, so we finally we finally got it all out the way we wanted uh -huh. so we just did it first I, I, I'm kind of amazed that this feature which has control and master it has not been raided by certain yeah, circles. I won't comment on that on camera, but obviously. <laughs> so, but, but no, connection it should put the socket into my home directory and let's make that like three minutes and when I connect there on host two I, I disconnect the control master connection is still active the 
because it's within the control persist time frame. Mm -hmm. um, um, I just press the tab and auto complete yeah, the name fast. without having to re authenticate it all that stuff. That's, nice. It's just that. Actually, if you can scroll back. If I can just right. scroll back on that one. I probably can. Oh, no problem. It's just that uh, it's also interesting to see that a set shared connection closed because yep. the real master is in the background. But if you yep. don't have persist, uh, you see this message only on subsequent connections. Mm -hmm. So, so probably we should wrap up and go yeah. to it at some point. I uh, have a kind of uh, more general question. With dash have a little X that you can just act actively tear down uh, a not yet time object control uh -huh. master. And when I do the same thing here and stop tabbing, that doesn't work. It's SSH not SCP. Ah, oh, sorry. This is actually this actually makes my life more, at least more understandable because I ran into this a uh, lot of times like oh fuck uh, it started to autocomplete <laughs> now I have to no idea yeah, yeah, yeah. depending I knew yourself. I knew what was the mistake yeah. I just <laughs> didn't want to also if you use SSHFS that mm. can also use the yes. same connection yeah yeah yeah. Should work with rsync just as well. Was there another question? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and the last so one. <laughs> that's also because uh, we are a collective based on trust, and so we are looking for uh, this magic way to involve new administrators in the collective. And uh, of course, mm -hmm. Unix systems are designed uh, to have. Uh, basically uh, root privileges or mm -hmm. something else that is not as useful for administration of the machine. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the ideas that uh, uh, we are uh, considering is to implement uh, some kind of uh, um, script uh, for uh, granting somebody access uh, to login, to um, do a force command, to join a Tmux session, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so this person could only write um, when other people are also logged in to this uh, connection, and we could say, okay, now we grant the connection to this person, and now we take it away. And it would be convenient. And actually, uh, Joey has who is writing Haskell programs now, um, design, like uh, designed such a system, so he has a white paper for this, where he can actually have a cryptographic proof of uh, the commands that were executed together with the output of these commands. So that uh, has even other use cases, but that's not the, the main use case. And I wonder if you know about other uh, initiatives, if you know about uh, this idea by uh, Joey, or uh, if you have any opinion on this on this topic, of course it's a hard uh, problem and it's hard to mm -hmm. do it back. Beyond, I haven't heard of that project yet. So, but if if Joe is doing it, it's probably not that bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, still boils down to trust somewhere. Yeah, it's a uh, it uses PGP to yeah. design the netcrypt and. Do a kind of blockchain of the uh, response yeah. and kind of imagine. Oh, it has blockchain, it must be good. We should get some VC money for it. But but it's, 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 it's an enterprise solution. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, yeah, so the Concarn is served. Oh, excellent. So, excellent. We will, so we'll finish up. Thank you very much for your input. I hope. We yeah, you did a great workshop. <laughs> <laughs> you did. Thank you. I learned a lot. And it's interesting how different the use cases for SSH are. Yeah, yeah. We find that you can run together with the